Hello, welcome to Maths Kitchen. Uh, this is what we're doing today, vectors or vector geometry. Right then, this is what the beginning of a typical exam question might look like. Uh, when you see those capital letters with the arrow over the top, that means the vector from A to B. So in this case, you're being asked to find the vector that goes from A to B in terms of A and B. And the in terms of A and B is referring to that little A and little B written next to the triangle. They're written in bold there, but when we write them by hand, we instead we underline them, uh, well, because it is quite hard to write in bold, okay? So I use an analogy to help me make sense of vectors. It's not perfect, but it definitely helped me to get my head around the basic idea of what's going on, okay? I think of A, B, and O as three villages. And there's currently a railway that connects O to B and O to A. The fact they have the little letters A and B next to them, that tells us that there's a railway line there, okay? So the journey that the train makes from O to A, we call that vector A, okay? And a vector is really just a journey. And if we want to go in the opposite direction, from A to O, we call that journey negative A. And that little arrow, you can see, that lets you know the direction of the journey, okay? The journey from O to B, then, is called vector B. And to come back in the opposite direction to the way the arrow is pointing, in other words, from B to O, we would call that vector negative B. So to come back in the opposite direction, you just make the letter negative. Now, the question is asking us to find the vector that goes from A to B. But at the moment, there isn't a train line that takes us directly from A to B. There is a line on a diagram connecting A and B, but it doesn't have a little letter next to it. So currently, there's no train journey that takes us from A to B. But we can make that journey using the train lines that we do have. All we need to do is to go from A to O, and we know that that's called negative A, and then from O to B, and that's vector B. So we could describe the vector A to B as negative A add B. Uh, I'm gonna go through a second example before we move on to look at the midpoint of lines. I'll put it up on the screen for a few seconds, so pause the video and have a go yourself, and then I'll be back in a moment to talk you through it. So I hope you are able to do that. Don't worry if not, I'm gonna go through it now. Um, but before I do that, if this is your first time at the channel, welcome. It's very good to have you here. I put up full length videos like this every Thursday and I do shorter tips and tricks style videos every Monday. I'll leave some links at the end of the video uh, if you wanna have a look at some of those other ones that I've done. Also, if you found the video helpful, it really helps the channel to grow and to become successful if you give it a little like or even consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Right, back to the question. So we're being asked to write in terms of A and B an expression for vector S cubed. Rod, how do you think we can do that? Um, looking at this, it's a lot different to the one before, so. Yeah. Uh, but I guess it would be minus B plus A. Yeah, and yes, that's... yeah, 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 so how come? Well, it's, go, it's got to go from S to P to Q. Yeah. So it's S going backwards from B. Yeah. So that's minus B. Yeah, yeah. And it's going forwards to A. So it's plus. And God knows what R and S and all that stuff is. It looks like a different shape, it doesn't does, it? Yeah. Well, it is a different shape, but actually within that, it's, it's really just the same as the previous one, isn't it? It yeah. initially looks different, um, but actually it's, it's basically just it's the just same thing. So don't let that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just look at kind of half of it. Brilliant. Good. Thank you. All right, now, so the second part of the video, we're going to look at the questions that involve midpoints. Rod, mm. what, do we, <laughs> what do we mean by the word midpoint? Well, the middle of a point. Right, exactly, yeah, the middle of that line, yeah? Let's go back to our original question. Let's say we were told that M is the midpoint of OB and N is the midpoint of OA. That just means that M and N are both exactly halfway along those lines, okay? So if O to A can be described as vector A, then O to N is half of that. We would just say it's half A. Vector B to M is half of BO, and we know that BO is negative B, 
So vector BM is negative half B, okay? But what if we were given the midpoint of A to B? Okay, we'll call that point P. How would we describe the vector AP? Well, AP is just half of AB. So all we have to do is find AB and then half it, okay? And we actually worked out AB earlier on. It's negative A add B. So AP is half of that. And you have options as to how you're going to write that. Um, you could say negative a add b over 2, or divided by 2. Um, you could use brackets to show that you're multiplying um, both of those by a half, um, or in other words, that you're halving each of them. Uh, or you could kind of expand those brackets. Essentially, you could just halve each of those. Okay, so negative half a add half b, right? All of those mean the same thing and they're useful in different situations. It depends what you're working out and what stage of the working out you're at. But the simplest way to describe it here, I think anyway, is negative half A add B. So we'll go with that, okay? Well, what if we were asked to describe the vector OP? Well, to go from O to P, you could go from O to A and then from A to P. And we would write that like this. Now. We know that O to A, we just call that vector A. And from A to P, well, we just worked that out. It was negative half A add half B. So if we put that together, we've got A add negative half A add half B. And we can simplify that a bit. So the A add negative half A, well, if you're adding a negative half a, that's really just the same as taking away half a. So we've got a minus half a, and then add half b. Well, a minus half a, that's just half a. So we end up with half a add half b. We've actually done now, actually. I want to give you one more question to practice. Um, and in fact, it will be a continuation of the one you did earlier. And we'll come back in a moment to go through the answer. So as usual, pause the video, have a go yourself. Okay, how did you get on with that? Uh, I hope it was okay, but don't worry if it wasn't. This is quite a difficult subject um, and it definitely takes a little while to get used to, okay? So we'll, we'll talk through that question now and we'll, we'll see how you did uh, compared with us. Uh, Rod. Talk me through it. So the first bit we were being asked, let's have a look, we were being asked to find um, the vector Sm, or to describe the vector Sm. Sm, okay, so to get, to find the half you need to go to S to Q, so it would be uh, negative B to positive A. Can I pause you there? Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. So to find Sm, before we can, what you're saying is before we can do that, we've got to work out that vector S to Q. Yeah. Absolutely right. So what so you said that was negative B add A? Yeah. Perfect. I agree with that. Spot on. Good. Okay. Right. But because M is halfway through. Right. Yep. Then it's half of that. So it would be negative half B plus half A. That's perfect. Yeah. So S to M is exactly half of S to Q. So it's just going to be half of what we got for that bit. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Negative half B add half A. Brilliant, good man, good man. Right, uh, and what's the second bit? Uh, to find P M, vector P M or from P to M. P to M. So for the easiest way would be to go from P to S. Yep. So um, that would be positive B. Yeah. Plus half, my negative half B. Yeah. Plus half A. Yeah, that bit that we just worked out. So you're going to do from P to S, which is B, yeah. positive B. Um, and then just going to add on the bit that we just worked out, the S to M, Sorry. which is negative. And so if we add all of that lot together, so we had B, and then we're adding negative half B. Negative half B. And positive. positive half A. Okay. If you add a negative, it's just the same as taking away. So we've got B, take away half B, right. basically. So we end up with half B, add half A. Okay. 
Right, good. I hope you found that useful. I hope it made some sense. It, it is quite tricky and it definitely needs a bit of practice, but I think those, the basic principles are not too bad, okay? It starts to get a little bit tricky when you get into the midpoint and you're adding vectors and things like that. But keep practicing. Um, as I say, part two of the video, we'll look at ones that involve a ratio and then we'll do a third video as well where we're looking at the new style question that I seem keen on asking, which is where you have to work out what the ratio is. Um, Brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next week.